Fresh scrutiny tonight of a controversial document known as the Steele dossier, nearly five years after it first made headlines. Now we know more about who was behind it. It didn't happen. And it was gotten by opponents of ours. Nearly five years since the Steele dossier first emerged publicly, federal prosecutors have laid out a clearer picture of the role well-connected Democratic insiders played in the narrative surrounding Donald Trump's ties to Russia. Two special counsel investigations, numerous congressional inquiries, and an internal review by the Justice Department have given weight to suspicions that the so-called Steele dossier was used by some Democrats as a political weapon against Trump. It was a group of opponents that got together, sick people, and they put that crap together. An ongoing probe by special counsel John Durham investigating the FBI's 2016 Russia probe is pulling back the curtain on some flimsy and potentially biased sourcing in the dossier that was put together by former British spy Christopher Steele. Steele has defended his work, telling ABC News in a recent tell-all interview it was raw intelligence that needed further vetting, but that his sources were solid. There wasn't one key source, I would say. There was perhaps one key collector. But Durham now says that collector was not a deep-seated Kremlin source, but instead a Russian citizen living in Virginia, Igor Denchenko. He now faces charges for lying to the FBI in interviews about where he got information that ended up in the dossier. Prosecutors say some of the information Denchenko fed to Steele came directly from longtime Democratic operative Charles Dolan, identified as PR executive one. An attorney for Dolan acknowledged that his client is the person referenced in the Danchenko indictment. Dolan has expertise in Russian affairs and a longtime relationship with the Clintons, serving as an advisor to Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign, state chairman for both of Bill Clinton's presidential campaigns, and named to a State Department advisory post by the former president. Four things that this commission has been arguing for over the last eight years that I've been on it. Dolan, who was not accused of any crimes, is indirectly tied to multiple allegations in the dossier, according to the court filing. One claim was about infighting within the Trump campaign when Paul Manafort resigned. According to prosecutors, Dolan lied to Danchenko about where he got the information, appearing in the dossier as coming from a GOP friend who was allegedly a close associate of Trump. Durham says Dolan was indirectly linked to multiple claims of the dossier surrounding Putin and officials in the Russian government, including information about Putin firing an advisor for insisting Russia would receive no blowback for its role in meddling in the U.S. election. Durham also indirectly connects Dolan to a separate, unverified claim that a Russian diplomat in the U.S. was recalled to avoid exposure over election interference. When I leave... Our country, I'm a very high profile person, would you say? I am extremely careful. Denchenko's indictment indirectly associates Dolan to one of the dossier's most salacious accusations, the infamous P tape of Trump and prostitutes inside a Russian hotel. The indictment suggests that in June 2016, Denchenko used basic information learned by Dolan about Trump staying in the hotel suite. Dolan toured the same suite, but allegedly wasn't told the fantastical details, which have never been proven true. And it's still not clear where those salacious details originated. Does anyone really believe that story? I'm also very much of a germaphobe, by the way. <laughs> believe me. And in one case, prosecutors say Danchenko made up a conversation with a source, falsely claiming he was in communication with a Belarusian American businessman, Sergey Millian. Court filings say Danchenko attributed two of the dossier's most explosive claims to Millian, that there was a conspiracy of cooperation between the Trump campaign and Russian officials, and that the Russians had compromise on Donald Trump. The indictment notes Millian asserts he never met or communicated with Danchenko. Contacted by CNN, Millian said in a statement, This fraud destroyed my health, life, businesses, and turned my American dream into a nightmare. Were you working for Russia? Danchenko has pleaded not guilty to charges he lied to the FBI. And his attorney says the case is pushing a, quote, false narrative designed to humiliate and slander a renowned expert in business intelligence for political gain. 
Separately, Durham also charged attorney Michael Sussman for allegedly not revealing to the FBI he was working for the Clinton campaign when he provided the FBI with information about strange cyber activity between a Russian bank and the Trump organization. Sussman worked for the same law firm that helped arrange the dossier, Perkins Coy. The Clinton campaign paid Perkins Coy, who then hired research company Fusion GPS, who then hired Steele. Steele's firm received $168,000 to find what it could on Russia's involvement in the 2016 election and any ties to Donald Trump and his campaign. President Trump's then Attorney General William Barr tapped Durham to lead the investigation into the FBI's Russia probe, known as Crossfire Hurricane. Some of the facts uh, that, that I've learned uh, don't hang together with the official explanations of what happened. Trump did show an openness as a candidate and businessman to receive favor and business from Russia. And there have been dozens of proven contacts revealed between Trump campaign associates and Russian nationals. Still, none of it added up to the collusion suggested in the Steele memos. And his probe looking for exactly that, special counsel Robert Mueller could not establish a criminal conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russian actors. We focused on whether the evidence was sufficient to charge any member of the campaign with taking part in a criminal conspiracy, and it was not. Though few of the underlying assertions proved true, Steele's big picture takeaways about Russian meddling were similar to the eventual findings by the U.S. intelligence agencies that Russia did interfere in the 2016 presidential election with an aim to elect Donald Trump. The goals of this campaign were to undermine public faith in the U.S. democratic process, denigrate Secretary Clinton, and harm her electability and potential presidency. Putin and the Russian government also developed a clear preference for President-elect Trump. Still declined to comment to CNN, but told ABC that while some of the specific details were off, several of the main pieces were not. Our work highlighted the threat that authoritarian regimes pose to democracy, and it still is a great threat to democracy and to our way of life. I think it's very sad what they've done with this fake dossier. While Donald Trump bitterly complained about the dossier, others were swept up in it. The dodgy dossier began with the false allegations about me. The FBI used references in the dossier to monitor Carter Page, a former Trump campaign advisor, as part of their application to get a wiretap on him in October 2016.